listen sweetie it's the 20th century and if i want to wear a bikini don't mess with my vibe Hello my darlings, my name is Ashley and welcome back to my channel. Okay, but anyways, today I am bringing you some more vintage facts. My last vintage video did super well and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I will link that video down below and you can go find it. Well anyway, I really hope you find these fashion facts from the 1930s just as interesting as I did when I discovered them for myself. So let's get on into the video. Okay, so firstly, if you were a woman living in the 1930s, your dresses had to be mid-length with puff sleeves, with the Oxford shoes, with the fur winter coats, knitted berets, and you also always had to have a belt going around your waist. Their fashion also consisted of making sure the hips were really, really tiny and super fitted and also having a high neckline. So basically the ideal woman for back in this time was to be super tall, like six foot, really slender with a very tiny, tiny, tiny waist and very narrow hips. I don't know how many people I can name that has all those things, but it's basically none. You didn't have all those picky requirements. You were made to wear like puff sleeves or shoulder pads to really exaggerate your shoulders because that way it would make your waist appear smaller. I mean, not gonna lie, I wear a lot of puff sleeve shirts because I think they're really cute and it does make my waist look a little smaller. Now that I know the reason behind puff sleeves, it makes me not ever want to wear them again, but like, at the same time, they're so cute. I don't know, I guess it's just for us to decide. Okay, well we also have to remember too that back in the 1930s, there was a pretty great depression. So women didn't really have a whole lot of money to spend. So they had these really tight budgets, but basically there was no excuse for sloppy fashion as said in a magazine. It was considered a woman's duty to shop smart and look smart. Also, for single working ladies, they had to look extra good because they needed to look their best in front of their male employers. So I guess if you're not pretty enough, then you're just fired. Trash. I totally get looking presentable, but the reasons, again, just because of their, like, to impress their male employers, like, what was wrong back in the day? It's now that you know a little bit about how women kind of had to present themselves. I'm gonna go by like what they would wear in the house. If they were gonna go to the park, if they were gonna go to a restaurant, I'm gonna go over all of those things because they had to wear very specific things to different events. Okay, so the first dress I'm gonna be talking about is the house dress. Now this is only supposed to be worn at home or maybe going to go visit your like neighbor girlfriends, like that's acceptable, but like you're not allowed to wear it anywhere else. These dresses were basically very basic and really comfortable and they were made out of cotton but they always made sure they had really bright colors or light patterns on them. Women also still really like to sew and make dresses or aprons so they would actually wait for the flower man to come and they would take what the flower came in like those bags and they would make their own dresses and aprons out of them because the patterns were so unique. I have absolutely never heard this one in my whole entire life, but how genius is this, especially since they were going through the depression and maybe they didn't have enough money to buy fabrics or anything. This is a really great inventive way to make a dress. Do I know how comfortable it was? I don't know, but leave a like if you've never heard about this before. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. Alrighty, so we are moving on to the afternoon dresses. So women would wear these if they were gonna go shopping, run errands, go hang out with their friends, go to a tea party. Yeah. So these dresses are definitely more fancy than the normal house dress. 
but they wanted it to be one basic color, but also make sure that there was a lot of embroidery or decorated buttons, bows, and even faux flowers. Oh, and do not forget about the waist belt for that tiny little waist that they need to have. Alrighty, we are stepping it up a little bit more and we're getting into the evening gowns. So these dresses would only be worn if you're gonna go out on a date or if you're gonna go out with your husband to a nice dinner. These dresses would be only made from silk, satin, or chiffon. They were also worn with usually like a fur wrap or a fur coat because fur was very popular back in the day. So again, they wanted these dresses to be really fitted at the waist to have the puff sleeves, but they also wanted the dress to like flow down to the floor like a mermaid tail dress, if that makes sense, and also have a very high neckline for the elegance. I would honestly not argue about that because that dress sounds beautiful. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's Christmas. <laughs> I mean, dun, 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 we're on the wedding dress section. Okay, that did not go. Ready, if you got what I was saying, we are on to the wedding dress section. And I don't think I really need to explain where you would wear this. So you would wear it to your wedding. Also, I think I am secretly maybe even reincarnated, 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 maybe that's how you say it, I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm definitely from like the 1930s because this style is like, fits me to a T because this wedding dress I'm, I'm like about to explain to you, oh my god, it's like my dream dress. Okay, so basically your dream wedding dress from the 1930s would have that long neckline with the long sleeves that goes floor length with the fishtail-esque style and your dress would be made out of silk or some type of shiny satin. I cannot speak today. And you would of course also have that exaggerated lace trimmed veil that cascades down the aisle of the church. Me, instead of being a YouTuber, I should write poems. <laughs> Just kidding. So moving on from the dresses, I wanted to talk in deeper depth, depth <laughs> about colors. I don't know what language I'm speaking, but it's not English. Okay, so this is where it gets really, really me. So if you are gonna wear a pretty dress in the spring or the summer, it has to be pastel colors, meaning like like pinks, sky blues, lavenders, light yellows. It is literally my color palette. And in the fall and winter, you would have very rich earthy tones, especially burgundy and maroon was a huge, huge hit, especially for the fall. And maroon is one of my favorite colors to wear, even though it's not really in my color palette necessarily, but I just think it's so beautiful. Also, when it would get a little warmer outside, the colors peach and aqua were a huge, huge hit in the 30s, which I think those two colors look so beautiful with every single skin tone, so I see why it was such a rage. I think you can tell that the 1930s was a very, very colorful time period and no color was ever left out. Alrighty, moving on to women's pants. Yes, pants for women. I actually didn't know women were allowed to wear pants back in the 30s. I thought that kind of started up in the 40s and 50s, but I was wrong. But you were only allowed to wear pants if it was like for sportswear, like tennis, hiking, skiing, or even watching sports. I'd be that girl if like a guy came to you, why are you wearing pants? I'd be like, I'm watching sports. Yay. <laughs> this is also the time era where like the sailor pants became huge. Like, you know, the pants that have like the two rows of buttons that everyone calls like the sailor shorts or the sailor pants. Yes, this started in the 1930s and it was a very, very common sportswear pant to wear by the women. I'm kind of curious if like the 70s and 80s kind of took this design from the 30s, but their sailor pants that they wear, they would like flare out kind of like boot cut jeans would be because they wanted to make sure that the pants looked really feminine and so it still looked like a skirt, which honestly it does. So yeah. 
Alrighty, so we are now moving on to the swimwear. So they would normally wear one pieces that were made out of wool. Oh my god, that'd be so hot, especially on like a 90 degree day on the beach. Oh man. Anyway, but they would wear a mini skirt over some boy shorts and they would have like a little belt going across their waist so it really cinch it in and they would also just have like the simple like tank straps that we have today and also they would have like the plunging back so it'd be super opened and really feminine. I bet you didn't know this. So sunbathing became a super popular trend in the 1930s because of our girl Coco Chanel inspired the world to be tan like her. Basically liked it because she liked how the skin looks and she's just like, it's a really fun, relaxing activity that everyone should do. So to protect them from the beating sun, they invented the sun hat so their faces wouldn't burn and also they would wear sunglasses so they would not be blinded by the sun. <laughs> oh, um, this whole thing, <laughs> I got it from Chanel also with these sunglasses. <laughs> oh yes, I'm down here at the beach tanning because Coco Chanel says to me, the 30s was so fashionable. They also allowed women to wear open toe sandals so it'd be more comfortable for them to walk on the sand and it would be just a little more breathable because breathable it's hot. Our sisters from the 1930s hopped on the glamorous train of beach PJs. So I guess this is their version of our romper. So it's supposed to be very, very flowy and comfortable and it's attached with like a sleeveless top. So you, you could just stay nice and cool on a hot summer day. The PJs for the beach are really known for their extreme widths and bold patterns, and they were only worn to pools, beaches, or at home. I would love a pair of these beach PJs. Maybe that's what I need to come out with. Alrighty, so we are gonna move on to blouses, which are just their everyday shirts. So these were fit to be very short and really snug around the waist. So there wasn't a lot of extra fabric. You had to like snug under your pants or anything, which I think is very smart. These blouses also had a very conservative neckline, but they always had a lot of like extra details, which I will buy a shirt if the neckline is super fancy because I absolutely love shirts like that. Um, they're also, like, there wasn't a whole lot of colors going on. They kind of just picked one color and kind of stayed in that range. But they always made sure that there was ruffles or puff sleeves. See, these blouses were made out of cotton. But fun fact, the floral print cotton button-down blouse was the ultimate favorite for the 1930s. What I just described to you is my ultimate favorite shirt I like to buy. Alrighty, so we are moving on to something that we would only wear if it was a little chilly outside. So we're moving on to the coats. So these coats were very, very well made, usually made out of wool or real fur. Yes, that's what they did back in the day. They usually went about mid-calf to knee length. They had the full shoulders with the puff sleeves and the oversized collars. I mean by oversized collars, I mean like they have this fur collar that is literally detachable because it like poofs out here. It's like, it's like, you're, there's no wind coming in. So another fun fact about the coats they would wear, which I guess kind of makes sense because it is around like World War One and World War Two, is the bomber jacket. This really started to be popular and coming into the fashion trends in the 1930s. So kind of like how it all started was women were actually going to the men's section and purchasing these bomber jackets because they just thought they looked really cool and they liked how they looked. So then finally, I guess the fashionistas were like, okay, we need to make the girl version. So then they did start making them for women. So cool, right? Alrighty, so a very, very important thing that women had to remember was their accessories. Like what gloves, what hats, what jewelry, what makeup they were gonna wear for the day. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna start out with hats. Women really liked small, teeny tiny hats. Usually they would wear them at a tilt and have a feather sticking out because it looked very, very delicate. And in the summer, they would wear the sun hats, but they were a little bit smaller than what we have today, and they usually like to wear them in white. Okay, so this is kind of another fun fact that I didn't really realize, but you know like in those old movies when 
maybe a woman is riding in a car with their man and they have like a scarf over their hat and under their chin that is made to keep their hair obviously really nice but they would wear that walking around if they have like a really bad hair day and they're like oh my god i can't be seen in public they'll just take a really pretty delicate scarf and put it over their hat and under their chin and wrap it up and it looks super super elegant and it was a huge fashion trend from the 1930s in today's era we don't normally do that so we kind of just have to suck it up and go out with the bad hair day okay so this is definitely the most basic one out of the group so for the bags they would normally just carry around a clutch and they would have like a jeweled clasp that they could just easily open and take out their lipstick and fix themselves in the bathroom like they really wouldn't carry like a lot of things around so they didn't really need big bags but the later it got in the 30s going into the 40s bags did eventually get bigger and they got introduced to like actual like handled bags so then they did start carrying around more stuff to places and that's probably when they stopped making pockets in dresses and pants and shorts if you think about it <sighs> Okay, so now we are on to gloves. Now, I think we all know this was a very, very popular thing in the 1900s and also the 1800s. You would only wear it if you're gonna go out for the day or go out for dinner, if you're gonna wear your evening dress. Usually, usually they went to like mid arm length, if that makes sense, and they usually wore crocheted lace or even leather. If you were feeling like a really bad bee, <laughs> you know what I mean, they had these gloves called the gauntlet gloves, I believe that's how you pronounce it. They basically had a cuff attached to the end and they would only come up to like literally your wrist and like they were acceptable but not to everything. They were kind of just introduced so they were a little bit new so people didn't really trust them but I think they're super, super cute. Okay, so moving on to jewelry. I actually found this one very informative and I learned probably the most from this one. So kind of like I said in the beginning of this video where a lot of people are on a budget because you just have a depression and you have the wars going on. Like a lot of people just don't have money. So they had to basically DIY their own jewelry. They would go as far as taking a small cluster of flowers and it would make the perfect brooch or they would even take colored glass beads that were supposed to like mimic pearls and it was a lot cheaper and they also used rhinestones a lot because they were obviously a lot cheaper than diamonds and they were honestly just sparkly and so they made it into like dress clips pins earrings bracelets and even even evening necklaces Maybe this is where all the DIYing came from. Our ancestors from the 1930s. Anyways, moving on to shoes. So basically, the only shoe that women really wore were the Oxfords, which were obviously extremely popular. They had a really low chunky heel so women could wear them all day without really hurting their feet. They like to have like a lot of lacing or bows or really cool like stitching on it and if you had ones that had like little cut out holes in it that apparently was a very unique characteristic for the Oxford pump and you would be really cool to have these. Also can't forget about our heels so they call them pumps and um, they just had a square heel and they weren't like super tall or anything but this is more for business occasions. Both of these shoes were usually made out of suede or leather. These shoes were like super fancy, like dang. And last but not least, we are on to the talk about beauty. If you've ever watched The Great Gatsby, uh, which I do recommend, it's not my favorite movie, but I think it's really good if you want to see how the culture and what everyone looked like back in the 1920s. Well, even in the 1930s, women still liked to have their hair pretty short, like to the shoulder length. They would only wash their hair once a week because they wanted to have those super tight curls. So they would usually put in these, I think they're called the rag curlers, and they would leave them in all night and they'd treat these like super deep curly waves in their hair. I actually only wash my hair once or twice a week. No, it's not disgusting as long as you wash your body. It's because if you want to have long hair, like I have really, really long hair, 
like it goes past my booty but <laughs> anyway if you want to have long hair you have to have your natural oils do its thing because if they don't then it's gonna make your hair super dry and brittle and break off and a lot of people just don't realize that like a lot of my friends they wash their hair every day or every other day and it's actually super bad for your hair so i recommend only taking like or like washing your hair only once or twice a week and making sure you put a lot of like conditioning products to make your hair super soft super silky and it will grow like a weed if you guys would like to know my tips and tricks about hair care, I would love to make a video on it, so just comment down below. Okay, so in the 1930s, makeup became super popular. Like, it was booming. Like, all the women were wearing it. Like, it wasn't like a trashy thing anymore. They thought it made you look really elegant and really extra beautiful. Eyebrows, they wanted to be very arched and thin. Even though mine aren't very arched, they are really thin, so they would like that. Also, if you're gonna fill them in with any colors, they said it has to match your hair color. So if you have like blonde hair and you have like brown eyebrows like mine, like that was not acceptable. Like that looked really trashy to them. So make sure your eyebrows match with your actual hair color. Um, so for your lips, they wanted you to paint on a super like pale pink color that matched your blushy cheeks. And then they also really liked dark long eyelashes. So kind of like how mine are, they would think that is really, really acceptable. And they also really like shimmery jewel eyeshadow shades, which are also my favorite. But basically, everything I listed is what I do to my own face. So I would be rocking the 30s. Except I need that glow. I have to have that highlighter. Like, it's just unacceptable. Okay, but anyways, um, that was all my fun facts for fashion in the 1930s. Um, yeah, there was a lot of shocking things. Like, things I did not think that were even acceptable to be wearing back in the day and I guess they are and I just learned a lot so I hope you guys learned a lot too. For how much I like to talk, um, this is probably gonna be a really long video. So if you guys liked it, um, please, please, please share with your friends and family or whoever you talk to because that is really, really gonna help me out. And also subscribe if you would like any more fun, fancy, vintage content from me. I am trying to post every Monday and Thursday. So if you would like to be alerted for my video releases, make sure you turn on the bell notifications. But anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your day and thank you so much for watching and bye-bye!